It's Wednesday evening. It's weather for Weather Geeks time in the middle of a pretty active week and an interesting week, kind of a weird weather day uh, today. And we'll tell you why here at the top of this video. But first, before we get right to that, let's talk about today's date in weather history, as we like to do sometimes in this video. And today is a notable date in weather history because it's the anniversary of our hottest temperature on record for our area officially. 103 on today's date in 1936. Now, at this point, the official thermometer for our area, uh, I don't know exactly of the sighting, but it was in downtown Youngstown somewhere. Uh, the Youngstown Warren Airport, uh, that site uh, did not uh, really uh, become the official location for weather observations in our area until the early 1940s. Um, so lower elevation in downtown Youngstown, yes, that probably added some to some of these really hot temperatures we saw back in the 30s. But of course, we were in the middle of the Dust Bowl, and it was, generally speaking, a very hot period in our part of the world. Not in the entire world, of course. Um, anytime I bring up temperatures in the 1930s, I get some climate deniers on social media. But uh, just because, uh, of course, it was hot in a certain part of North America in the 1930s does not disprove climate change or anything like that. Um, but nonetheless, wherever the uh, the sensor was in our area back in the 30s, it was hot frequently, including on today's date, 103 degrees. We haven't hit 100 since 1988. All right, last night's storms underachieved. The modeling kind of it was a swing and a miss on a lot of the modeling last night with a lot of the activity kind of missing us to the west. Now we kind of hinted at that possibility on Weather Geeks last evening, but yeah, it certainly came to fruition that our thirsty gardens didn't see a whole lot in the way of wet weather last night and this morning. Some you know, trace amounts and a few hundreds here and there, but nothing really all that significant. So we're at uh, a paltry half an inch at the airport so far this month. That is about 0.82 inches behind average for the season, over two and a half inches behind the average. Now we're still running a surplus for the year, mostly because we had a pretty wet March and early April. If not for that really fast start to the spring season, our yards would look even more kind of uh, ugly at uh, this point because ever since about tax day it hasn't been very wet in fact it's been fairly dry over the last couple of months and yeah an unusual day today we're in the middle of uh, a time of the year that outside of thunderstorms typically we don't have a lot of windy days but we had a gust of 39 at the airport today 47 in pittsburgh 44 over in akron when we look at our average wind speeds by month as we get into mid and late summer, this is typically the least windy time of the year in our part of the country, um, with August taking the cake as the least windy month. So an unusual day today to have non-thunderstorm winds of that kind of magnitude. And it's all because, of course, of the remnants of Beryl moving through the northeast. Now, Beryl brought some tropical moisture to our area over the last couple of days, but now we're on the backside and the drier air is pushing in. Now, these dew point change numbers aren't crazy high and this isn't a very fall-like air mass but it is distinctly different outside this evening as compared to several hours ago and certainly at this time last evening we talked about this last evening in this video that you know this wouldn't be a huge huge air mass change but it would be enough that a lot of us would notice it after uh, kind of the florida like air mass that we've had over the last couple of days barrel will be off the playing field before too much longer but one of the things that it'll be most remembered for is the number of tornado warnings this system spawned after it moved inland and rolled up through the ohio valley into the northeast um, all these polygons on here are tornado warnings that were issued by weather service offices of course we had a swarm of them around shreveport louisiana and then today an unusually active severe weather day up in parts of new york state now this area of New York State, kind of downwind of the Great Lakes, is a lot of times shielded from big severe weather outbreaks. Uh, kind of the air mass kind of gets modified some by Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. So you think of places like Buffalo and Rochester and Syracuse is not exactly severe weather hotbeds. But look at all these tornado warning polygons from earlier today and even into this evening around the Finger Lakes area in New York, that's south of Rochester and north of the Pennsylvania state line. We had a, a handful of tornado warning polygons down into the Keystone State as well. This is pretty well forecast. I mean, we were expecting a pretty big severe weather day uh, today. Uh, I'm sure storm ser surveys will be done by local National Weather Service offices. I've yet to see a lot of video and pictorial evidence of a lot of tornado touchdowns today. I'm sure there were some. I just haven't seen a lot of 
evidence of that, but certainly we had a lot of rotating updrafts that prompted those tornado warnings, and we did have quite a bit of wind damage from Buffalo right across I-90 to Syracuse and up towards Watertown, New York as well. And yeah, this evening, the severe weather threat continues for a little while longer in New York State, parts of eastern Pennsylvania, and up into interior New England. Tornado watch still out there. Severe thunderstorm watch includes Baltimore and D.C. And closer to home, it's just kind of a gloomy evening with clouds and some spits and of drizzle and, and showers. What you see is what you get this evening. It's going to try to sprinkle and shower a little bit this evening into parts of the overnight hours as kind of the upper level low pressure system now pivots through. And so we're going to hang on to the clouds through the overnight. The clouds will then thin on Thursday. Should be a very nice second half of the day. And into Thursday evening, heading to the Trumbull County Fair, this will easily be the most comfortable late afternoon and evening of the entire week with uh, temperatures and dew points very reasonable, um, not quite as breezy as it is outside this evening. Also, no raindrops to worry about during the second half of Thursday and into Thursday evening. You'll notice on our model here on uh, Thursday night into Friday, there are a couple of raindrops out here. There's actually a little bit of a residual kind of trough of low pressure in the upper levels that's kind of hanging back a little bit. At the surface, we have high pressure, but upstairs, we got a little disturbance that's going to try to kick up a few showers. I think all of this is off to our west on Friday. We'll see a few fair weather clouds Friday afternoon, but even though it'll be a warmer day, the dew point's fairly manageable Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Uh, as we head into the weekend, we're in pretty good shape into Saturday. It's going to turn hot, but we should be dry from start to finish on Saturday. I think as early as Sunday afternoon, there could be a thunderstorm or two. One of the things this severe weather season I've been uh, looking at a lot is this product from Colorado State University. It's a machine learning or AI uh, model for severe weather over the next six, seven days. Uh, I found this to be pretty useful in severe weather season, especially when you're looking out days four, five, and six into the future. And this uh, machine learning model does paint Monday into Monday night as a period in which severe weather risks may be heightened across the area. In fact, this black dot right here is where the severe weather risk may be maximized according to the modeling here. That's in Northern Ohio. Uh, again, Monday into Monday night. I think we're gonna get into a pattern for a little while where there's gonna be some clusters of storms that cascade southward and southeastward in this kind of regime with high pressure centered in the, in the Intermountain West. And so I think we're gonna be visited a few times by some showers and storms Sunday afternoon into parts of Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, perhaps even into Wednesday as well before the deck kind of gets cleared at the end of next week. But we could be in for kind of a stormy unsettled period for a few days starting at the end of the weekend and uh, taking us into early next week. And that may come with some severe weather concerns. Of course, <coughs> pardon me, we'll be talking more about that in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Wednesday evening. I'll see you right back here on Thursday.